Hello all! Have you ever thought about what happens to your trash after it's thrown away? You might be surprised to know how much science is actually involved. It's not just piles and piles of trash. Landfills have this reputation of harming the environment and human health, but turns out that is not how a modern landfill works. Today, I went to the Southside Landfill in Indianapolis, Indiana to show you this entire process. This landfill was created in 1971, which means a portion of this landfill is Pre-Resource Conservation and Recovery Act, or RECRA. That is just a fancy way of saying before there was any criteria for municipal solid waste landfills and other solid waste disposal facilities. Basically, making open dumping of solid waste illegal. Thank you, EPA. Today, we were lucky enough to get a tour of the Southside Landfill as they are building a new cell. Kurt Pablo, our guide and EHS director, was kind enough to take us on a tour and explain just how a landfill was designed to protect the environment and public health. Vast, thoughtful measures are taken with regards to liquid and greenhouse gases created by the loads of trash and ways to mitigate or capture those byproducts for other uses. This location alone brings 1.2 million tons of trash per year. That breaks down to around 3,288 tons received per day. And based on the remaining acres left at this landfill, Kurt predicts they have around 30 years left before this landfill would need to be capped. As you would assume, a landfill is far from a quiet place with heavy machinery and cars loading and unloading trash. I'm actually at the intake area where individuals can come up and dump their trash for a fee. Trucks, dump trucks, U-Hauls, you name it can actually come, empty their trash. The trash comes in around 700 pounds per cubic yard and compact it to around 1,600 pounds per cubic yard and eventually end up on a hill like this. Sanitary landfills like this one use a four-part layer system designed to allow waste to decompose safely. Layer one, the liner. Layer two, the drain. Layer three, gas collection. And layer four, the trash. Layer one, the liner. The first line of defense is the clay compacted liner. So this clay is compacted dense enough to prevent liquids from penetrating it. This compacted layering of clay is designed to reduce porosity and decrease soil permeability. So hydraulic conductivity, which is the rate at which water can move through the soil under the influence of gravity, can be no greater than 10 to the minus eight centimeters per second. So that's equivalent to about one foot in 30 years. Directly on top of the clay is a high density plastic liner designed to prevent water from touching the clay and diverting the water to layer two. Layer two, the drain. As waste decomposes, it produces a liquid called leachate. Now this leachate combined with the rain and snow are all collected in a drainage system and funneled to the wastewater treatment plant. Layer one and two are designed for long-term protection. They're designed to keep leachate from reaching our waterways. Layer three, gas collection. As our waste decomposes, it produces methane. And as you know, methane is a greenhouse gas that contributes to global warming. But methane is also a key component in natural gas that companies are willing to purchase. Modern landfills collect methane and CO2 that has been piped and sold. Here at the Southside Landfill, that gas was sold to Rolls-Royce at their boiler plant and is currently sold at a high BTU plant here in Indianapolis. Layer four, finally, we have the trash. The trash is delivered, compacted, and covered up with a new layer of dirt every single day. Day. I've learned a lot in my time with Kurt and I hope you took something away from this today as well. Landfills are certainly more than what meets the eye. There's plenty of science involved from the four layer system to the mitigation and trapping of greenhouse gases. This is a very well thought out system designed to be efficient and safe for all involved. Stay tuned for more information. I think I'm going to dive into what happens to the methane and CO2 when it's sold. What's good for business, it's good for the environment.